Dusty Springfield. Dusty really was my 60s. If she had introduced me to the American artists recording for Atlantic, Motown, Chess, Sept and the likes, Ready Steady would have been a very different program. She and I had become best friends when the Springfields did the RSG pilot. Her manager, Vic Billings, her brother Tom, Pepe Borza, we were like a group going around to do everything together. If you see me walking down the street... Vic Dusty and I went to Paris one weekend to see Dion Warwick, little Stevie Wonder, who was then 13, and the Shirelles at the famous Olympia Theatre, where the ghost of Edith Piaf was ever present. It was winter, it was freezing cold, and a lot of snow and ice. On the way to the airport, I sat next to Dusty in the cab, and when I got out, I looked as if I had slept in a cat house, as her very trendy, probably expensive, white rabbit coat had shed all over me. In Paris, we headed to the Olympia, with Dusty in the rabbit coat and boots with the highest heels. At one point, Vic and I looked for her to catch up with us, and as we turned around, she literally slid towards us on her bottom as she'd slipped on the ice. We laughed so much that neither of us could do much to help. I just can't get over losing you, and so if I see you, The show was incredible. I'd never seen anything like this. I'd never heard music like this. It literally changed my life. Give Dion a ring. I first met you at the Olympia Theatre in Paris and you sang Walk On By and Dusty and I were like two fans screaming. <laughs> 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 well, That's a good thing. No, no it was a good thing. It was, I mean, it was just wonderful. We'd actually never seen anybody like you because the music was so different. There were, I think, almost 18 acts on that show because they had acts from all over the world. Uh, Stevie, the Shirelles and I were the three American acts. And did you know who Edith Piaf was? I didn't have a clue. No, no I, I, I didn't think a, so. A, a babe out of the woods, you know, yes. my first trip to Paris and I, I believe it was also the Shirelles' first trip there and I know it was Stevie's. So we were all kind of in awe of being where the Eiffel Tower was, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Anyone who ever loved could look at me and know that I love you. The only downside it was that a lot of artists, including Dusty, covered your songs before you could get them out in England. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I suppose it still happens in a way. Well, it doesn't happen quite as frequently now, but it seemed to be the rule of thumb over there for quite a while. It wasn't only Dusty, that woman still black. <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite right. <laughs> There were no homegrown English R&B acts, so we all fell in love with the American voices. This time it's goodbye, Loving you the way I do, I take you back. Without you, I die, Knowing I love you so... Dust became a regular on RSG, and via modern technology, here she is, talking about the show to Andy Peebles back in 1989. I did it for three weeks between the end of the Springfields and the time that my first record was out. I don't want to be with you, and it was um, it was quite amazing. I mean, I'm not a natural interviewer, but, uh, you know, I just sort of hid behind my beehive and read things off little cards. But Vicky had this incredible ability to get acts. I mean, they yes. poured in from the United States. Why yes. was that in that era? I mean, obviously they well, wanted exposure. I think Vicky exposure. was a big fan of the same kind of thing as I was. Yeah. I mean, we sort of loved Timmy Euro and, and, and people like that that nobody knew over here. So her enthusiasm uh, was what got them here. And, and sort of, I think they were quite pleased to be breaking new ground. I mean, they grumbled about the food and they grumbled about the weather, but basically they were really kind of intrigued about being in England. 
The whole nuance of that program was the sort of live feel to it. Now, oh, it was just chaos. I mean, it was. I had such a love-hate relationship with that program because I think I actually did more of them than, than anyone else, like twenty something of them. And when the first ones were live, I mean, people wouldn't be there when you announced them, and it was just the immediacy of it. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard that, and the audience stood up in the middle at San Remo, it's Pino de Nagia who wrote the song. I just said, that's it, that's the song, and I sat in it for a year, because it wasn't the right time to have a ballad out, and I was doing those up things. I said, the time will come, praying that no one else would do it, meanwhile, you know, sort of tucking the record under the couch, <laughs> praying it would never come to England, and it didn't. And because um, in those days we didn't have the, the speed of exposure. I mean, things stayed very much in different countries. It's a lifesaver, that song. I mean, I dread doing it every time I have to do it because I, I dread the key change. It's such a killer vocally. So that was Dusty, and here's Simon, as in Napier Bell. We wrote lyrics to You Don't Have to Say You Love Me. How did that come about? <laughs> Dinner. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> at another of our wonderful dinners. I think din I missed the dinner. <laughs> no, at another of our wonderful dinners, I think it was at the Matlow, and you said to me, Oh, Dusty's got a song she wants some lyrics for. Could I tell you someone you should go to to get the lyrics? And I said, Well, why don't we do them? And I, I thought you'd say, No, we couldn't possibly, but you said, Yes, let's. <laughs> After dinner, we went back to your flat, and you got this record out, the scratchy old acetate it was, and we listened to the Italian record. And I said, it's an Italian song, you know, uh, we don't know what it's about, but it's obviously a love song, so it has to have I love you in it. And you were very unromantic in those days, and you shuddered and said, absolutely, I, I won't have I love you in this. I said, OK, well, but I don't love you. And you, even you said, that's going to be fake, I don't love you. So I said, well, you don't have to love me. OK, well, you don't have to love me. But that didn't fit the melody. So we, you don't have to love me. Just, oh, you don't have to say you love me. That fitted it perfectly. And that was it. We rushed off to the I did come for the night. And, and actually, we didn't much like doing lyrics because we were ten minutes late for the club. Left alone with just a memory Life seems dead and so unreal All that's left is loneliness There's nothing left to Animals were all-time favourites of ours, and Eric Burden came...